And now onto our dinosaur of the day, Apisthocoelacadia, which was a request from Tyrant King via our Discord and Patreon. So thanks. It was a sauropod that lived in the late Cretaceous in what is now Mongolia in the Gobi Desert. And it's estimated to be about 37 to 43 feet or 11.4 to 13 meters long. There's a lot of different weight estimates though. So it ranges from 8.4 tons to 25.4 tons. Apisthocoelacadia had a small head and it was quadrupedal. It had a medium length neck that was about 16 feet or 5 meters long. Seems pretty long if his whole body was only about 40 feet. That's true. Gregory Paul in 2019 found that there were 10 dorsals, which is the number found in titanosaurs. The number of back vertebrae. Mm -hmm. It also had a long tail and a flexible back and a strong pelvic region. And Apisthocoelacadia had bony projections on the top of its spine, like Diplodocus. Proportionally, its limbs were short, and its forelimbs were about two-thirds the length of the hind limbs, which were fairly flexible, and the foot claws were all about the same size. It may have used its tail like a third leg when it reared up, which meant that it had a flexible tail. The thick pelvis may show that it was strong enough to rear up. Originally, a pistocelicadio was thought to have a straight back, but in 2007, Daniela Schwartz and others found the back may have dipped towards the rear and that the shoulder blade inclined at a steeper angle. The type species is Apisthocoelacadia skarzynskii. The genus name means posterior cavity tail and refers to the opisthocelian structure of the anterior caudals, which means the vertebrae at the anterior, which is facing forward, of the tail. Closer to the head, in other words. Yes. They were concave on their posterior, which is facing rearward, so the posterior sides, and it was convex on their anterior side, so it formed ball and socket joints. And because of this, it may have been able to rear on its hind legs. The species name is in honor of Wojciech Skarzynski, who prepared the type specimen. A nearly complete skeleton was found, no head or neck, in a 1965 joint Polish-Mongolian expedition. Apistocelicaria, the holotype, was an adult, and it was found on its back, with most vertebrae still connected, though the left limb and rib bones were found to the right of the body, and the right limb and rib bones were found on the left side of the body. There were tooth marks on the skeleton, which probably means that large carnivores ate the carcass and may have removed the missing parts, like the head and the neck. There were bite marks found in the pelvis and right femur. Because of the completeness of the skeleton, it probably died close to where it was found, and it's possible there was a flood that moved the body and then covered it in sediment. A juvenile part of a shoulder was also found, and part of a tail and some claws have also been referred to Apistocelicadia. It was described by Maria Magdalena Borsuk Bielnonica in 1977, and it was found in the Nemet Formation. It was hard to move the fossils. There were stone blocks that had to be moved about 1,900 feet or 580 meters on metal sledges made of petrol drums and then put onto trucks. It's quite elaborate. Yeah. But the team packed the skeleton into 35 crates, and that weighed 12 tons. The holotype was part of the collection at the Institute of Paleobiology in Warsaw and then later went back to Mongolia, and now it's at the Institute of Geology of the Mongolian Academy of Sciences in Ulaanbaatar. There was another sauropod found in the Nemet formation, Nemetosaurus, and that's known from one skull. Apistocelicadia, the skull is not known, so some scientists think Apistocelicadia and Nemetosaurus are synonymous, and if they're synonymous, then the name would go to Nemetosaurus because it was named first in 1971. Yeah, it's tricky when one of them, you know, most of it except for the head and the other one, you only know the head. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's not a great place to be in. Right, because you can't properly compare anything. So Nemetosaurus was found in the same expeditions as Epithocelicadia, but it was thought to be from different clades. Uh, Nemetosaurus was originally classified as Dicreosaurinae. Epithocelicadia was Camarasauridae. Now both dinosaurs are thought to be titanosaurs and Apistocelicadia is now classified as Saltosauridae. If they both end up in Saltosauridae, then that could be trouble for getting synonymized. Because it'd be more likely? Yeah. I think it might be a case of need more fossils. Although, Phil Curry and others in 2018 found some postcranial fossils in the quarry where Nemetosaurus was found, and that may have belonged to the holotype. And that could help support the idea that Nemetosaurus and Apistocelicadia were synonymous. Other scientists think femora found are Nemetosaurus and that the femora is different from Apistocelicadia, which would make them two distinct dinosaurs. 
Sauropod footprints have been found in the Nemet Formation with skin impressions, and they're probably either Apistocelicadia or Nemectosaurus. A skin impression of the footprint shows non-overlapping scales, and there's also claw impressions. The footprints found were very large, so they were probably made by a dinosaur larger than the type specimen of Apistocelicadia. Other dinosaurs that lived at the same time and place as Opithocoelacadia include Tyrannosaur, Tarbosaurus, Ornithomimosaur, Dinochirus, Sauropod Nemectosaurus, of course, Troodontid, Borogovia, and Ankylosaur, Tarchia. And other animals that lived at the same time and place included fish, turtles, crocodiles, and birds. For those of you who listen to our Dinosaur of the Day segment and you like it, please consider becoming a patron. We take new Dinosaur of the Day requests from our patrons and offer a bunch of other perks as well. So check out our page at patreon.com slash or click the link on the left.